Hey, how's it going? And welcome along. I'm Rory from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So welcome along to this. It's a quick tip tutorial. I did promise that I would do some more Cinema 4D tutorials. I have to admit, I've got back into cinema fairly recently with the newest version and oh god they've moved everything, everything's hard work now and yeah everything takes me twice as long. However I'm slowly getting back into grips with it. Yeah I mean one of the things that I always now do is, is hit that standard button and put it back to how I feel kind of comfortable with the buttons of where they are. So that's one thing that to bear in mind with this I will be using it with this uh, layout so that's where the buttons will be, but you can find anything easily enough. The other thing that, that drives me nuts is this starting with the logo scene. Now, just as an extra quick tip, if you go into preferences and then come down to files here, you've got default scene, and by default it's set to logo. If you can set that as blank, it will load up a blank one, or you can actually choose your own if you sort of tend to always load the same thing. So I'm gonna set that to blank now anyway, but as lovely as this, this scene is, it, it gets kind of annoying just having to constantly delete it. But there we go, right, so that's gone. Now, what are we gonna do today? That's a really good question. And it's regarding the animation of text. I was working on a logo recently that I wanted to animate in using the plane effector and so on. And one of the problems I was having was that it was animating the whole word rather than the individual letters. So that's what we're gonna quickly cover is how do you make it so that you can animate the individual letters. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go in here and grab a text spline. And this is going to be our text. And we're gonna use a slightly cooler looking font because that looks, that looks pretty nifty now. Right, next, um, I'm gonna hold down Alt with my text spline selected and I'm gonna extrude it. And there we go, we've now got 3D lettering. How easy is that? That's brilliant, right. What do I wanna do now? I wanna affect that with a plane effector. Now, without going too much into detail, now you can keyframe things and move them around and do all of that. However, if you want to be able to really easily update your animations and adjust them slightly and add extra little cool effects, then I always recommend you use a plane effector. And, and here's where the point is. There's a couple of ways to handle this. So if I go to MoGraph Effector Plane, right, here's a plane effector, and that adds in this deformer here. Now by default, it doesn't sort of show anything. It doesn't really seem to do anything. And the reason for that is because we need to tell it kind of what it's gonna do. Now, if we look here under parameter, we can see that there's a positional change on the Y axis of 100 centimeters, but that's not occurring. So to make that happen, basically we have to do two things. The first is to put it as a child of the extrude, and then under deformer, we have to set it to object. And now you see how that's jumped up? If we now go back to parameter, we can move this around and you can see there, what we've done is we've made it so that that plane is now affecting it. So. If I put that to um, zero and we say, I don't want a positional change, I want a rotation change. I want it, say, to start off minus 180. So I want to start that way. Now that plane is causing that. Now in the olden days, you would just animate that plane. If it was in the middle here, it would be affecting it. If you moved it out of the way, it wouldn't anymore. But that doesn't work like that anymore. You now have these fields. So you can create some really clever stuff here, but we're just gonna use a really simple linear field. So we just press that button and you see how it's now appeared back to there. So this is where we now, if we slide that off, we can see there we go. So that's now moving uh, I Love 3D Animation back into position. Now, what do we do? Right, let's say we want um, to do this. So we're gonna start it off there like that. We're gonna set a keyframe for our linear field like so, and then we're gonna come forward 30 frames and we're gonna move it until it's into position there, like that. And there we go. So now when we do that, you see it animates into place. Nice and easy, right? Okay, so uh, we don't need as many frames here so we can have that, so it's nicely looping. Now, why would you go to this effort to do this? Now, the reason is, is to use other things. So if we come into here, there's a delay. And I love this because this just makes animations just pop. And now what we need to do with the delay is put it so that it is lower than the plane, but not inside the plane. So we need to make sure that it's not as part of the plane, it's just underneath it. And the reason is because this is gonna work through in a kind of hierarchy. The plane is gonna affect it first, then it's gonna be affected by the delay. So it's quite important the order in which you have it. Now, if I press play now, you won't really see much difference. Now what it's actually doing is by default, it's set to blend. Now if I put this number up, you'll see it kind of rolls in a little bit kind of smoother. I actually need a few more frames to see that properly. But So that gives you a nice kind of, um, ramped animation like it just gives you this nice smooth kind of ease in uh, type animation however you can also press this and set it to spring and now it kind of boing 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 into place and what's nice about this is if i come into my linear field and just grab that and reduce that to say only 10 frames the spring is much more sort of 
affected by that. So you can do some really cool and interesting stuff with this. So now we're finally to the point of this whole tutorial. Now, this is where I got to, and I, re I realized that this is one way of doing it, and that's all fine, but I can't individually animate the letters like this. I want them to come up do, 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 as this linear field moves along. So how do we do that? Right, so basically, we're gonna slightly change the way this all works. So I'm gonna delete my delay, I'm gonna delete my plane. Now, my extrude, I'm gonna place into a fracture object. So that's fracture there, so hold down Alt, and there we go. The, the text is now in a fracture object. And then the object and then mode, we're gonna set that to explode segments. And what this does is it tells it that each one of these are individual. So now, all we have to do is keep that fracture highlighted, go to MoGraph, plane, and that is already affected, you see, because the fracture object has this field here, effectors, and any effectors you drop in there are going to affect this fracture. And the order works in the same way as we just covered in a moment ago. So you make sure that you, you've, you've got to put them in the right order. Now, we're already, um, we've got default 100 up. So we'll put that off for the moment and we'll do the same thing that we did before. We'll put this to a minus 180. I don't know why I just turned that off, right? So like so, and then we will go into our fields. We'll create the linear field. And here you can now see, look, it is affecting each one individually. And depending on the size of our linear field depends on kind of how it affects it. If we make sure our linear field is at this end first, we put in our keyframe and then we'll come forward to frame 30 and we'll go to the other end and we'll press keyframe. And now we can see, there we go. I might actually just give this a little bit more because that's a little bit fast, isn't it? Obviously it's going a lot further. So we'll double that up to keyframe 60 and there we go, we've now got are nice one at a time. Now, with that fracture selected again, we can go to MoGraph Effector Delay, and we can do some tweaks with the delay. First of all, we can have a look and see what it looks like with Blend. So that looks really nice. Because we're using a combination of the, um, the curved acceleration and deceleration of our keyframe, because we didn't change the keyframe from default, it's kind of automatically got a curve on it. Combined with that blend, that makes that actually look really nice in terms of it just smoothly turning around. But really easily, we go into there, into the delay, and press spring, and boom, we've now got a cool looking spring effect on it. What else can we do? There's there's kind of, there's all sorts you can now do with the, your plane effect here, you see. So you can come into here and we can maybe, let's turn the, oh, what happened there? There we go. Let's put them all to 90 degrees, and then we'll go to the position, and we're just going to move them back slightly and down slightly. And then we'll enable scale as well. And uh, we might as well just use uniform scale, and we'll set this to minus one, and they should basically all now disappear. And now, when we press play, our text boings into place and looks really cool and really groovy. And that's it, That's that. it's as easy as that. So what you can then do is you can then sort of isolate that into a system. So that was uh, Alt G to put it into a group and we'll we'll call this line one, for just for example. We could actually then, let's just move our keyframe to the end, uh, make a copy of this and paste it and we'll call this one line two. And then if we just grab all of that and move it down, and we also go in here, we go to our plane, and we find our two key, uh, key uh, our two keyframes, and we just shift them. So I've just grabbed them, so I'm just gonna shift them over a little bit. So that will offset our animation. So now it goes one, two, and there we go. Now I could probably refine that a little bit. I think it maybe doesn't wanna come over quite so far, so maybe we just have it slightly behind. So it's like that, and there we go. So that's the beauty. We now only have to change that one thing, and we can just keep making more lines. We can change the text. We can go into this one. Because it's all procedural, we can come into this. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, I don't really know what I'm writing now. <laughs> uh, but, but there we go. Uh, and it's great. I love 3D animation. I did that the wrong way around, but whatever. You, <laughs> I think you get the idea, right? And then I've got one final tip for you. So. It's very, very important when you're using this kind of MoGraph animation, especially with the delays. If I just render this out now, it very likely, it will look exactly like that. And you'll be like, well, where's my delay? I set all that up. And the reason is, is because you need to cache it. So on your fracture objects, on both of them, right click, go MoGraph tags, MoGraph cache, and make sure you click bake. 
That'll do that. If these guys are green, that means you're good. When you render out, it will include the, uh, the bouncing, which isn't there because I had them switched off when I baked them. So let's just rebake those. And then hopefully that should fix that again. There we go. But that's also something also worth remembering. If you now change any of your delays or your settings, you need to go in and update your baked frames, clear the cache, bake them again. And that's it. That's basically, that's basically it. That's, uh, that's my little um, first tutorial in, a, in I don't know how many years. I just thought that was kind of interesting. It was a, a little problem that I came up against and had to figure out and a few little bits and pieces on the way. I hope that that was useful to you. And uh, if it was, don't forget, press that like and the subscribe button. Um, press the little bell if you want to keep up to date with what I'm going to be doing. I am reviving this channel again. I've got a really, really exciting announcement. There is a very important video I'm going to release on Christmas Day. And then I've got a really, really exciting announcement for New Year's Day. So yeah, make sure you stick around for that. If you like uh, the ragdoll animation stuff and if you like gaming, then uh, yeah, I recommend uh, come and have a look. Cool, cheers, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.